The Trump administration announced today that it plans to implement new immigration rules. As Yamichelle Sindor explains, it's one of the most aggressive steps yet to limit legal immigration. Today's new rule from the Trump administration limits who will be eligible for a green card in the United States. Under current law, immigrants are already required to prove that they are not what the government deems a, quote, public charge. Today, Ken Cuccinelli, the acting head of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, announced the plans. He said any immigrants who use or who are deemed likely to use a number of public benefits may not be eligible for legal status. The benefit to taxpayers is a long-term benefit of seeking to ensure that our immigration system is uh, bringing people to join us as American citizens, as legal permanent residents first, uh, who can stand on their own two feet, who will not be reliant on the welfare system, especially in the age of the modern welfare state, which is so expansive um, and expensive, frankly. The new rule includes services afforded to legal immigrants under current law, such as housing assistance, Medicaid, and food stamps. To break it all down, I'm joined by Teresa Cardinal-Brown. She is the Director of Immigration and Cross-Border Policy at the Bipartisan Policy Center in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much, Teresa, for being here. Um, talk to me about how this will impact um, immigrants and the legal immigration process in the United States and who will be most impacted by this new rule. Sure. So the, the rule applies to those who are applying to get green cards in the United States. Um, and so one of the longstanding issues in immigration law, as you mentioned, is whether or not someone would become become a public charge. That has been broadly defined as somebody who would be mostly dependent on the government. It's a it's a criteria that has been I'd say used sparingly, uh, over the, especially over the last couple of decades, but it has been a priority of this administration to implement. So it would look at whether or not uh, people who are applying to be green card holders have used public benefits that they might be eligible for. It would apply to current immigrants or citizens who are looking to sponsor others to come on green cards, and it would apply to some non-immigrants who are looking to extend or change their status as well. What can you tell us about how much immigrants use public benefits in comparison to native-born Americans? So we did a literature review a couple of years ago about, about who uses public benefits. And what we found is general individual immigrants use benefits uh, less often and at lower rates uh, than U.S. citizens do. But some immigrant-headed households, particularly those with U.S. citizen children, may use more of them because the children are eligible for benefits that maybe the immigrant parents are not. Critics of this new rule say that this is the Trump administration again unfairly targeting immigrants. There are talks that there are going to be swift legal challenges to this. How does this new rule um, really factor into how the Trump administration has overall used its immigration agenda to target different groups? Well, particularly its regulatory agenda has been about legal immigrants. And one of the things that we have seen is that a lot of the uh, regulatory changes that have been implemented have been about uh, reducing eligibility for legal immigrants immigration, uh, reducing the number of people who can qualify for legal immigration or slowing down the legal immigration process. You said the, the term public charge has been kind of implemented and enforced sparingly. Tell us a little bit about the history of the term public charge and how certain immigrant groups have been um, subject to, to that term and what it's meant to overall and, and in the years coming. Well, the idea of preventing the poor or paupers from immigrating has been around basically since the beginning of the republic. Initially, when the United States was created, states had control over who could immigrate and they would look for people who they thought might not be eligible to able to work or support themselves. Themselves. In the 1800s, Congress passed the first sort of uniform immigration rule, it was the Chinese Exclusion Act, that also included this public charge rule. But over the years, it has been very subjectively enforced. So, for example, during the Ellis Island days, they would look at whether or not they, somebody, they thought somebody was physically able of performing work. Um, did they have family members already here or sponsors? Did they bring any money with them? So it was sort of on the fly. Uh, this has been a priority of this administration to get a public charge rule published since the administration came in. Uh, an executive order was issued very early in the presidency asking for this to be done. Um, so it's it's new in that we don't know exactly how it's going to be implemented. It's still a relatively subjective standard, especially that prospective looking part. Is an immigrant likely to become a public charge? That's where it's a little more iffy because they're going to look at things like, does the immigrant have a work history? What's their education level? Um, do they have any health issues that might affect whether or not they would uh, become a public charge? We have to kind of see how that would be implemented. But we've already seen some of this because consulates overseas have been, Im have been implementing some of this through the visa review process over the last year already. 
Now I want to turn to a major story from last week. Some 680 immigrants were arrested during immigration raids at food processing centers in Mississippi. What goes into such raids and what legal consequences, if any, might employers face? So a raid like that is, of that size and scope has probably been in process for many, many months. Um, it, it probably was based on some information that Immigration Customs Enforcement received that those employers are employing undocumented immigrants. Then they also collaterally arrested undocumented immigrants they found on the premises. Now ICE will go through all that documents that they found during those search warrants uh, to see if they have enough evidence to proceed with prosecutions of those employers. So we may see some prosecutions, but historically it's been much more difficult to prosecute employers for knowingly hiring undocumented immigrants than it has been to arrest the undocumented immigrants themselves and see them deported. Well, lots of immigration news. Thanks so much for joining us. Teresa Cardinal-Brown of the Bipartisan Policy Center. Thank you.